meeting of Chillicothe City Council to order. Roll call, Mr. Clerk. Trutchell. Here. Tapney. Here. Sibrel. Here. Prohl. Here. Patrick. Here. Neal. Here. Gray. Bonner. Here. Ames. Here. Okay. I'd like to ask everybody to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. The uh, minutes were in your packet that the clerk uh, passed out. Were they to everybody's liking? Okay. Mr. Bonner? I make a motion to accept the minutes. Okay. Do I have a second? This is Neil. Seconds? Roll call on accepting the journal minutes. Trutchell? Yes. Tapman? Yes. Several? Yes. Prohl? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neil? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Okay. The minutes are approved. Do I have any reports of committees? Mrs. Patrick? Thank you, President Reinhardt. The Utilities Committee has two items on tonight's agenda. Both are up for the third reading. And I'll start with number two. It authorizes the mayor to enter into a contract with the Ross County Board of Developmental Disabilities to provide transportation services for its clients. Currently, we are running three routes for DD. This legislation adds seven more. At the committee meeting held October 28th, it was shown that accepting this contract would result in a slight profit, but more importantly, offers consistency for the DD clients when it comes to their transportation needs. I'm comfortable with the final budget numbers that Transit Director Gibbons provided us because she also provided the basis for all these numbers. And number one is accepting six buses from the Ross County Board of DD and appropriating $3 to cover the cost of buses. This is a companion ordinance, ordinance to number two, and if you recall, the DD contract budget that was presented at the October 28th meeting shows um, a capital expense of $25,000 a year set aside that will replace all six buses within five years. I would ask for council's favorable vote on both these items tonight. That concludes my report. Ready. Thank you, Mrs. Patrick. Any other reports of committees? Mr. Tapman? Thank you, President Reinhardt. The Engineering Committee has the one item on the agenda tonight. Item number four, requesting $7,500 to cover engineering code enforcement costs for the remainder of the year. And at the appropriate time, I will be asking to waive the three rule. Okay. Also, the engineering committee is currently working on four assignments. Assignment 13-120, it's a returning part of 2nd Street to two-way. Uh, assignment uh, number 13-79, and I combine this with 13-121, it concerns signage in and on public right-of-way. Uh, assignment 13-118 is ODOT's proposal to improve intersections on part of Route 50 Western Avenue. Also, assignment number 13-119, parking considerations in the 2nd Street and Paint Street areas. I have been working on all these items for a few weeks, and I am awaiting additional information in order for me to proceed. And that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tabman. Any other reports of committees? Mr. Pearl? Safety Service Committee has three items on tonight's agenda. Item number 11, which is a first reading, is to amend chapters 1501.01 of the codified ordinances of the City of Chillicothe pertaining to the enforcement of fire code. Um, item number 12 is to authorize the transfer of safety levy capital funds for vehicle repairs costs. Um, this particular item, um, we had to seek an opinion from the law director because we were going to um, use these monies out of the safety levy capital for repairs. Um, it was the opinion of the law director that um, there was no specific yes or, or there was no no not it was not sp specifically spelled out that this um, could or could not be done. So she um, went ahead and drew up the ordinance. Um, also, item number thirteen, which is to transfer the appropriate funds to cover the mandatory police and fire departments <coughs> pension payout payments. So that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pearl. Any other reports of committees? Mrs. Ames? Thank you, President Reinhardt. Development has one item on the agenda tonight. Item number three is the first reading of an ordinance authorizing the city to accept $10,418 for 
from ODOT's Elderly and Disabled Transit Fair Assistance Program, calendar year two, 2012, and to enter into a contract with the State of Ohio Department of Transportation for the Elderly and Disabled Transit Fair Assistance Program for calendar year 2014. This is an annual request. This program was established in 1975. The program originally was established to allow reduced fares for the elderly. Reduced fares for people with a disability were incorporated into the program in 1978. The reduced fare is one half the regular adult fare. The allocation formula is based on using actual ridership data to calculate the fare box lost. Because the contract is due to the ODOT Office of Transit by November 21st, at the appropriate time, I will ask to waive the three week rule and pass this tonight. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Ames. Any other reports of committees? Mr. Sibrel? I'm going to do two committees. Uh, first is the Finance Committee. We have five or four <coughs> items on the agenda for Finance Committee. Um, two of them up for first reading is a security deposit for insurance. $16,667 uh, for 559 561 East 2nd, and the next one is $10,089.80 uh, at 3 Marlboro Drive. That's in typical fashion. Uh, we do want to waive the three-read rule so we can get this money back to the property owner, as this was held by the city as a security deposit for structure damage to those properties. Item number eight is uh, an appropriation of $30,000 for income tax refunds. This will get us through the remainder of the year. This is a request from the auditor. The next item is number nine, is to transfer $4,300 from, uh, let's see, I forget the exact accounts. Civil service, for the Civil Service Commission, I think it was supplies or miscellaneous items to the salary line item for civil service <coughs> to pay for the help there in the office. That will be all for the Finance Committee. Item number five, uh, in Ms. Gray's absence for the HR Committee, uh, she did ask that I uh, make mention to temporarily suspending the maximum hours established for the one part-time security officer in the Muni Court uh, for just the remainder of the year. Um, that is probably the key to nobleness ordinance. She did have a committee meeting on it, and the court has asked that we waive the three-read rule so they can get this into place as soon as possible. Um, it's a result of a job transfer and scheduling basically additional salary or additional hours for this one part-time security um, officer. So at the appropriate time, all five of those, we will ask to waive the three-read rule on those this evening. One administrative item. We had scheduled a finance committee meeting for this Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m., I should say, in the transit conference room, and that is to review budget, hopefully some updates with regards to our health care costs and maybe some revenue um, numbers to discuss as well. So, and that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sibbo. Any other reports of committees? Okay. Reports of officials, Mayor Everson. Thank you, President Reinhardt. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the uh, council members who were run on the post and had a smashing re-election campaign and got re-elected. The three at large candidates, congratulations on your re-election. Other Rapini, congratulations on yours. The board councilman, Bill Shulman, congratulations, welcome to the board. And also the council president. Thank and then treasurer elect uh, several congratulations on your election. It was good to see uh, another round of uh, professional campaigning done, and uh, I think all the citizens of Chilcot appreciate that and people talking about what they're going to do instead of what's wrong with the other person. So uh, that was good to see. Second of all, um, Eric and I had the distinct pleasure this, this evening to uh, go out to Golden Corral and meet uh, the veterans groups that uh, the veterans that came to eat dinner there tonight and how many did you say were there? I, there? There were hundreds there. Yeah. <laughs> it was really heartwarming to see the veterans assembled, old friendships rekindled and honoring them on this Veterans Day and um, and the service that they give to their country. They're, they're truly the heroes of uh, the United States and we're grateful for their service. 
I want to let it reassure that everybody that, uh, unlike my uh, weather predicting capabilities of Halloween, if it does snow tonight, our, our service crews are ready to go out with salt <laughs> trucks and take care of the streets if need be. And then uh, I would also like to speak a little bit about the, um, the Joe Molnar situation and his uh, total disconnect with the Carlisle building. I know there's some concerns there with that project still being active and um, still under uh, the tail end of negotiations, really the, the tenant agreement with Adina is in its final stages and also his financing uh, is in the final stages. Uh, but they have assured me, um, representatives from Adina and uh, Mike Chesler, that there is no financial connection with Mr. Molnar and the uh, Carlisle building. So doesn't look like there's going to be anything that impedes that project uh, with this latest development, which uh, is, is an unfortunate situation. And then lastly, I'd like to uh, ask that we move the finance uh, meeting on Thursday to 6.30. I have a conflict in the uh, schedule. Uh, I've got a drug task force meeting at 5. Uh, so if it's okay with council, I'd like to move that to 6.30 if that's okay with everybody's schedule. Anybody have a conflict with that? <coughs> Appreciate your cooperation with that, and that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Mary. You had to bring dinner, though. That's why they're. Auditor Feeney. Thank you, President Reinhardt. I just want to touch on a few of the items here tonight. I'll start with items uh, one and two, which are up for third read. Um, I think this process has seen uh, a good evolution from where we started several months ago to where we are today. Um, Appreciate the hard work that uh, Transit Director Givens has, has put into to getting this together and putting it in a presentable uh, format for us. And I don't think Mr. Marriott's here tonight, but uh, appreciate him coming to the meeting and making himself available. That data that Councilwoman Patrick referred to, I think, gave us um, some confidence. In essence, we're sort of acquiring a business, and without knowing how the business operated beforehand, uh, it made it awfully hard to, to decide if it was a good decision or not. Um, appreciate the folks. Um, I think, from my perspective anyway, and I, and I have no vote on it, but um, I thought it was heartwarming to see the, people, the drivers come. I think this is probably the fourth or fifth meeting they've been to. Um, and their dedication to the drivers, I think, is probably a testament to um, the potential success of this program. From the numbers perspective, um, the plan works. Uh, and I think um, what offers me some more reassurance is that um, I think that transit has temporarily been um, assigned to Councilwoman Patrick, and we all know her attention to detail. So I think, particularly in its inception, um, this, this program will have good oversight from Council. So um, I, I would encourage your uh, positive vote on those, those two items. I think that uh, in the current situation, any, any opportunity, whether it be general fund or uh, you know, proprietary fund, um, we need to take advantage of revenue opportunities. So that, that would be my encouragement on those two items. Um, item five, my understanding with the uh, municipal court uh, in those hours is essentially that uh, there's no, no need for an appropriation of more money. You've got, in the ordinance, essentially, part-time individuals are given so many hours. Um, one or two individuals are well under their hours and won't, won't reach the maximum. Uh, another individual has, has just because of timing and, and layoffs, not, I'm sorry, not layoffs, but job switching and that kind of thing, um, has a, is close to exceeding hours. So it's a budget neutral move. Um, and so for that one, I would also encourage your positive vote. Um, number eight is uh, unfortunately a necessity. Um, we tried earlier in the year to uh, cover income tax refunds with money available from unappropriated income tax refunds. It wasn't quite enough. Um, so this amount will come from uh, unappropriated general fund. I would encourage uh, a waiver of the three re-rule in that passage tonight. This is simply money that uh, we have to refund people. Um, the transfer in item nine uh, is essentially money that was budgeted for operations. Uh, our office cannot move money from operations to salary, so we just need that approval. Uh, I 
think that as a part of his um, budget presentation, uh, Mr. McLaughlin noted that um, his ideal would be to hire somebody basically for the rest of the year full time to come in, get, get things up to speed, and then the budget for next year reflects a 20 hour person in that office. So what you're seeing here is again, not an appropriation of new money, just it being able to be used for salary for the remainder of the year. And, um, at this point in time, you're only looking at a maximum of three pay periods. Um, number 12, we, we talked about this earlier in the year. Essentially what's happened is uh, the police department in particular has so much has had so many problems with their cruisers that the vehicle repair costs this year um, have probably doubled, anticipated, if not higher. There was an ordinance passed uh, either last meeting or the meeting before to approve the appropriation of money to, to cover some back bills that were owed to Napa. Um, because the expenses exceed so much what we had anticipated this year, and because they are related to capital expenses, um, I first contacted our auditor um, and, and asked her what she, her thoughts on the ability to use this capital money to make these repairs. She indicated that she thought it was permissible based on the statutory language in the ordinance, but then, um, as you know, we, look, we looked at the law director, um, whose opinion was essentially that the, the language was vague. And from my perspective, um, it's vague enough that it's, uh, I just wanted to put it before council permission to do this. It's not something that either, um, either police or fire department would like to make routine. It's not the first time it's happened in previous, a previous, or, a previous ordinance used the same type of money to buy uniforms, so I think this is even closer to um, permissible than that would have been, not that either would be non-permissible, but um, it essentially gets us through the end of the year with <coughs> vehicle repairs without having to go into the general fund, so I think it's a good option for us. Um, although it's, it's unique, I would like to request the waiver of the three read rule on this item simply because um, if we go to three full reads, it'll be very difficult, if not impossible, to get vendors paid this year. Um, and as we talked about earlier in the year, we like to stay on good terms with these local vendors because they're, they're good to us and we'd like to stay good to them. Finally, uh, item 13, my last item, uh, the total, it, it's a somewhat confusing, com confusing ordinance, but the total that's going to be coming out of unappropriated general fund for this request is $72,000. It's a big chunk of change. Um, we will essentially remedy um, the portion of the uh, fiscal caution designation but by completing this. Um, as you know, we transferred, we, we started paying monthly on these police and fire pension bills. Um, previously it had been quarterly, and what would happen is at the end of the year, if money was tight, it made it very difficult to make that last payment. What we're ending up doing this year is paying more than 12 months in a 12-month period, and that's why the extra appropriation is needed. But going into next year, we will only be paying 12 months, December to December. Um, so again, on that item, it, it's, it's, it's a necessity. Uh, not only do we have to pay it, but also because of its relation to that fiscal cost and designation. So on that one as well, I would encourage your uh, waiver of the three read rule and your positive vote. I went through a lot of stuff there. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> that concludes my report. Okay, thank you, Auditor Feeney. Well, Director Rutherford? Yeah. Thank you, President Reinhardt. Um, the Law Director's Office is currently reviewing our LEADS program, and we're preparing for an audit of that. Those of you that don't know what a LEADS is, it's what law enforcement in our office use to run uh, criminal histories and criminal backgrounds on people. And so because that's run through the state, we get to, uh, to be audited by the state. But we uh, feel that all of our procedures are correct. Police department in that. Um, on another note, um, we would just like to remind council members that in regards to legislation request forms, please submit those in a timely manner. Um, we're currently updating our request form, but um, you need to know that those legislation requests, as the legislation has to be done on Thursday, the day or 
Thursday before council. So that's not our 7, 14, or 21 days before, is that we have to have it done and we have to have it to Mr. Clausen on Friday morning so that he can complete uh, all the necessary uh, publicity that he needs to do to uh, get it in front of the paper and what have you. So um, just reminding you to try to get those to us as early as you can. Other than that, I don't have anything else. Thank okay. you, President. Thank you, Hall Director Fulford. Um, reports from the chair. Um, uh, Today's Veterans Day. Obviously, uh, we had uh, Pastor Smith give the invocation. Who was a uh, just a, I mean, he's a war hero. He he, he defended um, our freedoms. And one again, I want to thank him for coming and, and giving that invocation for us today on Veterans Day. And I want to wish to thank the the veterans a happy Veterans Day. It's a day we set aside to honor all Patriot veterans who carried the banner of Liberty forward since the first shots at Lexington and Concord. Millions of soldiers, sailors, airmen, Coast Guard, Marines uh, for generations honored um, their oath to support and defend the United States Constitution and spread liberty. Not, not just keep us free here at home, but they have freed millions and millions and millions of people around the world. And I always like to take this time to think about that because if you think not just from the founding of the country, from the revolution, it was the... It was the uh, the Union uh, soldiers in, uh, in the Civil War that, that uh, scourged the sin of slavery of our, uh, it was a stain on our society. It was those Union soldiers that uh, brought freedom to the slaves and brought, made them free. Um, World War I, uh, we, um, it was the American soldiers, and Marines and sailors, that won that war. Uh, Europeans were in deep doo-doo at the time before we entered that conflict, so to speak, in the trenches in Western Europe. It was our soldiers that brought victory there, and then obviously the greatest generation of all, the World War II generation, um, whooped Imperial Japan, the fascism of <clears throat> Italy and Mussolini, and the probably the most evil of evils, Hitler's Germany, Nazi Germany, and it was our soldiers, sailors, marines, uh, that did that, and with the help of some others, but let's face it, if we weren't in there, if the Japanese weren't dumb enough to bomb us in Pearl Harbor, who knows what this world would look like. And it's our veterans uh, that fought those conflicts. When do we forget about them? I like to mention on Veterans Day, it's the Korean conflict. That's kind of a draw. People say, well, that was a draw. It was a tie. Well, don't tell that to those soldiers that fought in that conflict. And surely don't tell it to the people living in the freedom of a capitalist society in South Korea versus the tyranny that they live in in North Korea. And I had somebody email me something about a year ago. And it's quite ironic. It's a view of the Korean Peninsula at night. And when you look at it, the north <clears> above the 38th parallel is pitch black dark, not a, not a sliver of light. The southern part of that peninsula is lit up like Times Square. And guess what? Reason is, it's freedom. It's a free society. And it's maintained free right now with our soldiers at the, at the 38th parallel. But those, those veterans that fought to keep that peninsula free then we come to the, the current conflicts. We're still technically in our longest war right now, still in Afghanistan. And think about 10 years ago, before both the Iraq and, the, and, and Afghanistan conflicts, how many millions of people lived in tyranny in those countries. And both countries, they're not perfect, but they're voting. Little girls, little Afghani girls are going to school and having, having their own fulfillment of their own lives. And it's because of our brave soldiers. So this time on Veterans Day, you know, please, um, you know, if you see one, shake their hand, give them a pat on the back, thank them, because we wouldn't be sitting here complaining about garbage pickup. And we wouldn't be complaining that debating whether we can pay for uh, the police cruiser repairs through ca safety levy capital and all those things would be a moot point if it wasn't for what those uh, men and women did in the past to bring us where we're at today, but also the ones that are defending freedom from here to the future. And think about it. It's a volunteer <laughs> army now. There's no inscription right now. These, and, and, and I heard something today. And th th there's a certain generation of soldiers and, and, and veterans now, and that's the post-9-11. That's our kids. I'm getting older. Those are, our, those are our youngsters that, you know, that grew up watching those Twin Towers go down and watching evil rear its head again in our lives. And it's those young men and women that picked up the banner. And again, you know, we've got freedom in places that prior to our soldiers being there 
lived in the Middle Ages, lived in the Stone Ages, as far as their uh, their rules and, and how they viewed women and, and society as a whole. So, again, I want to uh, thank them uh, for their sacrifice, and it's 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 very heartfelt for me. Um, also, uh, for for those who don't know, uh, yesterday was the 238th uh, birthday of the United States Marine Corps. Marine Corps is one branch of service. We actually celebrate our own birthday, we'll, and we have a date, and it was 10 November 1775. Again, at the inception of, of, of our country striving for our own freedom to get away from the tyranny of Great Britain, uh, the Second Continental Congress created two battalions of Marines. Um, and then actually in 1798, uh, there was another act that actually officially created the Marine Corps that was signed by Second President John Adams. So I thought I'd give you guys a little history lesson tonight. But I want to wish a, a, a happy birthday to all of my uh, current and uh, former fellow Marines. Um, uh, but to take off where, where Jack was talking about, I uh, want to thank the folks at Golden Corral. That was a, it was uh, warm to see. I mean, that place was lined up from the, from the door almost to the bowling alley from the whole hour and a half. I know that we were there, and I'm, they, they were still rolling in. And the, the folks at Golden Corral do a great service providing those, those, those troops and the families, actually, a free meal. And it's a... The, the, the general manager told me it's just a, a little bit of gratitude, but it, it was really, really nice to see you talk about a uniting um, kind of little event. I also want to thank Chillicothe City Schools. Um, my niece uh, invited me to their Veterans Day um, breakfast that they had on Friday, and it was really nice, too. The, the folks there provided a nice breakfast. The kids actually made hand, uh, hand cards and, and gave them out to all the uh, veterans that was there. So I want to thank... Uh, um, the, uh, the Chilcotty City Schools for showing, you know, having the kids show their support for veterans too. Again, I think it's very important. And locally as well, you know, we do have the Veterans Administration Hospital out there that are caring for these vets. So we've got even a little bit more of a, a tie to veterans than maybe some other communities don't. Um, I want to congrat again what the mayor saying. Congratulations, everybody, on your elections. There are three right in a row are at, at large candidates. Congratulations. All then opposed, Mr. Showman. Again, welcome. Um, like I said, we'll be getting you, the, the clerk will be getting you the packets and stuff from, from here on out, and I'll, I'll get with you and we'll, um, you know, get, get you some other information and kind of start that process as well. Congratulations, Dr. Feeney, and um, to our new treasurer, Mr. Sibrel, who um, I'm definitely going to miss on council, and, uh, but uh, look forward to you continuing to serve the community. Um, well, just on a, another note, um, Come to my attention, and I actually, as president of council, I have two appointments to the Majestic Board that haven't been filled. And I've made those appointments. I've appointed Emily Schmidt and uh, Tiffany Baldwin to the two uh, council president uh, appointees to the Majestic Board. So I wish them well. They're two go getters, and uh, the folks on the board are excited to have them come and, uh, and uh, move that uh, the Majestic and that board forward. Um, I want to thank Mr. Pro. We are, we are live tonight, or we are, we are being. Uh, filmed. Uh, it's ironic you're getting that, that set up for us, and the mayor and I was actually having a conversation. We were berated by my father at the uh, veterans dinner tonight that uh, why we're still not on TV and we're still working on getting you know the, the high school kids back and, and getting that back, but it's uh, we're not quite there yet. But uh, at least in the short term, I want to thank Dustin for his efforts to use his tech uh, savviness to hopefully be able to get this out to. Uh, individuals that, that want to view it so okay well that's all I have from the, from the chair um, audience participation any members of the audience wish to address council okay none we'll move forward um, old business Mrs. Patrick I just wanted to recognize Wayne Grigsby and the guys down at the waste treatment plant a lot of you didn't realize but about two weeks ago they run their generator every Thursday. Well, they started up the generator, ran fine. They went to switch back to the normal power from AEP, and it blew out the starters. So they had to run the generator from Thursday to Tuesday, but they didn't miss a beat. Everything worked. Everybody's sewage flow. So it's just, yeah, they be recognized. Everything worked. Yeah, because yeah, if, if we think it's bad when the trash isn't picked yeah. up, if the sewer's not exactly. flowing, that's, uh, that's a yeah. whole different issue. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mrs. Patrick, for uh, making a uh, public note of that. Any other old business? All right. Moving forward. Petitions and correspondence. Mr. Clark. 
Mr. President, I received uh, one notice from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control. Um, there's again been a transfer, this time from the Old Canal Smokehouse LLC, first floor patio, <coughs> south portion, second floor, 94 East Water Street, to the Old Canal Smokehouse of Chillicothe Incorporated, DBA Old Canal Smokehouse, of the same location. Okay. That's all I have, Mr. Right. President. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Any new business? Mrs. Ames? I wasn't sure whether to put this in old business or new business, but I just wanted to mention one other um, Veterans Day event that took place today. I attended the Veterans Service and Luncheon at Trinity United Church today, and uh, it was really a, a moving service. It started at 11-11, and um, they had different people doing musical things. Reverend Schmidt, who was here tonight, read names of military and honor and memory of their service, and they had the theme songs from each branch, and people in the audience who had been serving those branches stood up during the during the time, and then the audience members also offered family members who'd been in the service and honored them. And following that, there was a luncheon in the parish hall, and I had the pleasure of sitting with four veterans ages 88 through 91. <laughs> so that was really an interesting time, some conversation that we had. It was really very fun. I enjoyed it very much, and I want to thank the people at Trinity for putting this on. I think this is their fourth year, and it was very well done, and a uh, big crowd, and it was very nice. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for mentioning it, Mrs. Ames. Any other new business? Mr. Tretzel? I'd like to make a motion to excuse Mrs. Gray. Okay. Do I have a second? Second by Mrs. Ames. <coughs> Roll call to excuse Mrs. Gray from this evening's meeting. Tretzel? Yes. Tatman? Yes. Sybil? Yes. Kroll? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neil? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. And Mrs. Gray is excused. Any other new business? Mrs. Patrick? I just wanted to point out, I did pass out to council members and some of the uh, audience there, how to report the street light of sound. I've noticed we've got an awful lot of street lights out, and if the citizens can help out and turn these in, it just makes it a little safer for everybody. It's easy to do. Right, thank you. Any other new business? Mr. Kroll? Um, just uh, I'm going to echo a few things you've already talked about. One, um, we are recording this uh, to put onto YouTube, and um, we will get that uh, link out as soon as it's up, uh, submitted to all the council members, and we'll try to get that uh, available to everyone. And um, I also just want to take time, uh, because veterans are, are so near and dear to my heart. A lot of my, my, a lot of my family have served, and, um, and the president's right. We really need to take time and to honor them, and, and also... I just want to say to ask, uh, take a time to talk to them about their story. Um, these people lived uh, extraordinary lives, and a lot of times uh, these great deeds that they've done uh, go unrecorded, and so take the time to talk to them. And, and I'll share real quickly an example of this um, from my own life. My grandfather fought in World War II. He was in the Army of Corps of Engineers based out of Georgia. He served in Ireland, Scotland, uh, Great Britain. And then later he um, transferred over to Norway after Hitler had surrendered. And one of their duties um, uh, was to guard the young prince of Norway on his walk to school. <laughs> and years later, um, my grandfather was invited to a party thrown by the then king of Norway, as wow. he had grown up, uh, in Georgia uh, to thank them for their service. And my grandfather, uh, a true American, said that... Uh, you know, he, I asked him why he didn't go to the party, and he said, well, I would have gone if it was a president. <laughs> so, uh, he declined any monarchy. Um, so, but uh, that's a story that's always been near and dear to me uh, because I took the time to talk to him about those things. So um, if you know a veteran, please take time to listen to their story. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, Dustin. And, and, and I, I would reiterate that. I've had the pleasure of um, doing working in healthcare for the last 20 years and in the last eight I've, I did home care exclusively and, and that I would say that is uh, the biggest honor of my job it, it is helping those folks physically through their problems but it's just that you get these stories you <coughs> see the, the the metal display on the wall and, and you take the time to ask sometimes they'll talk sometimes they don't want to but you know at the end of the day what I, what I always you know find um, uh, comfort in is thanking them and and, um, and again, I, I, as, a, as, a, as a veteran that served on active duty during Desert Storm, I, I will tell you, when you see the folks out there in uniform, 
thank them. They really do appreciate the pat on the back, um, the their line behind you at McDonald's, get their coffee. For, I mean, just little things like that. But it goes a long way of showing, you know, the appreciation because again, they're they're volunteer service. They're volunteering their time to put their lives on the line and the family sacrifice. That's why you can talk to my wife or any other veteran, the, 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 the spouse and the kids, uh, you know, they serve as well. Um, and a lot of times they're, they take the brunt of the mom or dad not being home for, for birthdays and, and things that we take for granted. And uh, they miss a lot of that stuff and uh, they're doing that for us. So I, I uh, want to you know, reiterate that, Dustin. I, I think it's in, in, in that generation, Dustin's grandpa's generation, unfortunately, um, that generation is fading fairly fast. It's, it's that, that World War II uh, group of individuals are in their 80s and 90s now. So cherish that time, talk to them, thank them, and, and get their stories because their stories are, whether it's one story like Dustin's grandpa's, which is a, a very cool story, it's, it's history. And every, every soldier has their own little history that falls in the bigger picture. So again, thank you, Dustin, for that. I appreciate that. Any other new business? Uh, committee assignments uh, and meeting dates. Since our last legislative meeting, um, we've issued the following committee assignments. 13-132 to the Utilities Committee, a request for legislation to update the city's sewer use ordinance by establishing section 911.17 regulating discharge of oil and grease. That sounds like a fun one, Pat. 13-133 um, to the Human Resources Committee, a request for legislation to fund one full-time laborer in the service department. 13 134 to the City Services Committee, a request for legislation appropriating $17,000 to pay Pandy Environmental for landfill inspections that they performed in the city's behalf. And Bill, I'll get you an electronic copy of that. I, I just realized when, um, I just uh, realized I didn't have an electronic copy of that from, from Melinda, and she sent that to me um, late last week. So I'll actually just for your own electronic files too. Um, 13-135 to the Finance Committee, a request for legislation appropriating the sum of $10,089.80 received as security as a result of a structure file at 3 Marlboro. That is actually item number 7 this evening. 13-136 to the Finance Committee, a request for legislation to appropriate $30,000 to income tax refund from unappropriated general fund. And that is item number 8 for this evening. 13-138 to Safety Services. Committee, or no, excuse me, 13-137 to the Finance Committee, a request for legislation appropriating $16,667 received as security as a result of a structure fire at 559 and 561 East 2nd Street, and that is item number 6 this evening. 13-138 to Safety Services, a request for legislation to move $30,000 from Safety Levy Capital uh, Police principal note to vehicle repair, and that is item number 12 this evening. And 13 139 to safety services, a request for legislation to appropriate $72,000 from unappropriated general fund to general fund transfers to appropriate $70,000 from unappropriated police pension fund to police pension to appropriate $147 from unappropriated fire pension to fire pension. And I, I will not repeat that one. Um, and I want to thank the committee chairs uh, for their quick work on those, Jeremy and, and Dustin, for getting those up. <laughs> Sherry, for your office, for, for having those processed. So a lot of these are bookkeeping things, paying bills. Uh, the income tax refund, obviously, that's getting money back to the taxpayers. So I would um, uh, agree with Auditor Feeney to um, I, you know, quick uh, passage of those this evening would, would be warranted. All right. Legislation. Ready, Mr. Clerk? Yes. All right. Item number one. Third reading of an ordinance accepting six buses from the Ross County Board of Developmental Disabilities and appropriating funds in the amount of $3 to cover the 2013 costs and declaring an emergency. Third reading. Okay. Roll call on the ordinance. Trutchell. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Several. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neil? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Okay, that motion is adopted. The ordinance is passed. Item number two. Third reading of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a services contract with the Ross County Board of Developmental Disabilities to provide transportation services for adult 
developmentally disabled clients and declaring an emergency. Third reading. Okay, roll call on the ordinance. Trutchell. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay, that motion passes 8 to 0 and the ordinance is adopted. Item number 3. First reading of an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a contract accepting $10,418 from the Ohio Department of Transportation and declaring an emergency. First reading. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't make a motion for you, Nancy. <laughs> I was waiting for a day where I am going to wave the three regroup, please. Seconded by Mr. Bonner. Roll call to uh, waive the rules. Trutchell? Yes. Tapman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Prohl? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Okay, the rules are suspended. Roll call on the ordinance. Trutchell? Yes. Tapman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Prohl? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Okay, that passes 8 to 0 and the ordinance is adopted. Item number 4. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $7,500 to cover engineering code enforcement costs for the remainder of the 2013 calendar year and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Tatman? I'd like to request the, the way the three read rule, please. Okay, that is seconded by Mrs. Ames. Okay, roll call to waive the three read rule. Trutchell? Yes. Tatman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Kroll? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Okay. The rules are suspended and roll call on the ordinance. Trutchell? Yes. Tatman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Kroll? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. The motion passes. The ordinance is adopted. Item number five. First reading of an ordinance to temporarily suspend the maximum hours established for one part-time security officer for the Chillicothe Municipal Court as established by Section 151.02 of the Codified Ordinances of Chillicothe, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Sibrel, make a motion to waive the pre-read rule. Seconded by Mr. Tretzel. Roll call to waive the pre-read rule. Trutchell? Yes. Patman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Prohl? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Okay, the rules are suspended. Roll call on the ordinance. Trutchell? Yes. Chapman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Prohl? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Okay, that motion carries and the ordinance is adopted. Item number six. First reading of an ordinance appropriating the sum of $16,667 received as security as a result of a structure fire at 559 to 561 East 2nd Street, Chillicothe, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. First read. Mr. Sibrel, I make a motion to wait. Three read rule, please. Seconded by Mr. Trutzel. Okay, roll call to waive the three read rule. Trutzel. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay, that motion carries. The rules are suspended. Roll call in the ordinance. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay, the ordinance is adopted. Item number seven. First reading of an ordinance appropriating the sum of $10,089.80 received as security as the result of a structure fire at 3 Marlboro Drive, Chillicothe, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Sibrel, make a motion to waive the three read rule. Okay. Who wants to second? Mrs. Ames, <coughs> second. Okay, roll call this is to uh, waive the three read rule. Trutchell? Yes. Tatman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Kroll? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Yeah. Rules are suspended. Roll call in the ordinance. Trutchell? Yes. Tatman? Yes. Sibrel? Yes. Kroll? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Neal? Yes. Bonner? Yes. Ames? Yes. Yeah, motion carries and the ordinance is adopted. <coughs> Item number eight. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $30,000 for income tax refunds and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Sibrel? Make a motion to waive the three-read rule. Seconded by Mr. Trutzel. Roll call to waive the three-read rule. Trutzel. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay, the rules are suspended. Roll call on the ordinance. 
Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. That motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. Item number nine. Mm -hmm. First reading of an ordinance authorizing the transfer of $4,300 for Civil Service Commission Administrator salary and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Sibrel. Make a motion to wait three. Roll. Okay. Uh, seconded by Mr. Trutzel. Got a little tag team going there, guys. Uh, roll call to suspend the rules. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay. That motion carries. The rules will be suspended. Roll call in the ordinance. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay. That motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. Item number 10. First reading of an ordinance <coughs> accepting the sum of $20,888 constituting grant monies received from the Edward Byrne Justice Assistance Grant Program, which are to be shared between the Chillicothe Police Department and the Ross County Sheriff's Office, and declaring emergency. First reading. Does anyone accept that money now? Yeah. Okay. Um, Why not? Motion to... Motion to wave three to roll, sorry. Okay, second by Mrs. Neal. Okay, roll call to suspend the rules. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay. The rules are suspended. Roll call in the ordinance. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay. That motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. Item number 11. First reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 1501.01 of the codified ordinances of the City of Chillicothe, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. First reading. Item number 12. First reading of an ordinance authorizing the transfer of safety levy capital funds for vehicle repair costs and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Pro, I'd like to waive the three read rule, please. Go to second, Mrs. Neal. Roll call to waive the three read rule. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay. The motion carries. Roll call in the ordinance. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay. That motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. Item number 13. First reading of an ordinance transferring and appropriating funds to cover mandatory police and fire department pension payments and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Pro, this time I would request that we please waive the three read rule. Seconded by Mr. Bonner. Roll call to waive the three read rule. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay. The rules are suspended. Roll call in the ordinance. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay, that motion carries. The ordinance is adopted. <coughs> Mr. Bonner. Motion to adjourn. Seconded by Mr. Prohl. Roll call for adjournment. Trutchell. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Sibrel. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Patrick. Yes. Neal. Yes. Bonner. Yes. Ames. Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. Good meeting, guys. Thanks a lot.